Low energy ion scattering spectroscopy is an exciting technique that allows to study the structure and chemical composition of a material surface. In this materials characterization method, the sample is bombarded with a stream of ions and the positions, velocities and energies of the scattered ions are observed. The energy of the scattered ions depends on the mass of the target, so there are distinct peaks in the energy spectrum of the backscattered ions. These peaks give information about the sample's elemental composition. For example, if the sample surface consists of two types of atoms, then the green lighter atoms create a low energy peak in the spectrum, and the heavier blue atoms create a high energy peak. The red atoms are not present in the first atomic layer of the sample, and therefore they also do not contribute a peak in the spectrum. A real-world example would be a zinc aluminate spinel, where low-energy ion scattering spectroscopy can clearly detect aluminum and oxygen on the surface, but no zinc atoms, since these are located in the deeper layers. The uniqueness of this technique lies in its sensitivity to the very first atomic layer on a sample, and with a forward scattering setup, it is even capable of directly observing hydrogen atoms. The main components of the system are shown in this simplified model. Can you find these components in a real system as well? Let us see if you were correct. As the name suggests, the ion gun's purpose is to shoot ions at the studied substrate. The most widely used ions for that purpose are ionized noble gas or alkali atoms. Noble gas, such as helium, neon or argon, is ionized with electrons, giving them a positive charge. Alkali ion beams can be created by heating alkali wafers. In low-energy ion scattering spectroscopy, the ions usually have an energy from 500 electron volts to 10,000 electron volts. The precise desired energy of the ions is obtained by applying a suitable accelerating voltage. Before interacting with the substrate, the ions first need to pass through the ion beam manipulator, that narrows the beam and also filters the ions based on mass and velocity. For some experiments, the ion beam is also chopped with an unipolar electrical chopper, a pulsed wave generator that lets through ions only when no voltage is applied. As a result, the ion beam leaves the ion beam manipulator in pulses. By using short ion pulses, one can separate backscattered primary ions, for example helium, from sputtered ions of different masses by time gating. This makes it possible to detect signals that would otherwise be buried in the background that is caused by the ions sputtered from the sample surface. The sample is attached to a special holder that allows the operator to adjust the position and angle of the sample for different experiments. When the ions hit the substrate, different interactions take place. Some ions are scattered at a certain angle and also their energy will be different after the impact. Some ions, however, become neutral as they pick up electrons from the substrate. The ions may also be implanted into the material or deposited on the substrate surface. The primary beam ions may also kick out electrons or atoms from the substrate, 
and the atoms may even be ionized in the process. Radiation may also be emitted during the relaxation of the excited atoms. The electrostatic analyzer is commonly used to detect the velocities and energies of the scattered ions. In this hemispheric device, an electrical potential is applied between the inner and outer wall. The outer wall with positive potential repels the positive ions, and the inner wall with negative potential attracts the positive ions. Neutral particles are unaffected by the field and hit the wall, and thus they never reach the detector. Positive ions with too low energy are pulled to the inner wall and also don't reach the detector. If the cation's energy is too high, however, then it simply hits the outer wall. Only if the ion's energy is just right, it can pass through the analyzer and create a signal by interacting with the detector. By changing the potential between the walls, the operator can scan through a wide energy range in order to find out the energy of the emitted particles. In newer systems, a double toroidal analyzer is preferred, as it integrates the signal over the scattering azimuth, so the intensity is some orders of magnitude higher, compared to a hemispherical analyzer. The drift tube is used in time-of-flight experiments in order to detect the energies and velocities of the scattered ionic and also neutral particles. Neutrals can easily be separated from ions with the accelerator. There are two types of detectors that are commonly used. Channel electron multipliers and microchannel plates. If the ion or a neutral particle with sufficient energy hits the detector, then a cascade of secondary electrons is created, and the signal significantly amplified. Microchannel plates also give information about the particle's position, but that comes at the cost of sensitivity. These sensitive measurements with low energy ion scattering spectroscopy are performed in ultra high vacuum which can be obtained with powerful vacuum pumps, such as the turbomolecular pump and the ion pump. Samples that have been exposed to open air are always contaminated for this type of surface sensitive characterization method, and therefore they need to be cleaned inside the system in vacuum with appropriate equipment. Common ways to remove the contaminated top layer are sputtering, annealing or exposing to atomic oxygen. One of the most interesting applications for low energy ion scattering spectroscopy is the evaluation of the quality of graphene. For example, it is possible to verify the layer closure of single layer graphene. As long as there are defects in the graphene layer, there is still signal from the substrate. It is also possible to distinguish graphitic from carbidic carbon, which allows to detect even carbon-based contamination such as BMMA on the graphene's surface. Low energy ion scattering spectroscopy can also detect the metal impurities between graphene and the substrate material. Some of you may know that photoelectron spectroscopy is also very surface sensitive, but the truth is that it still integrates the signal over a few nanometer depth, so all these four cases would result an identical signal for XPS. However, for low energy ion scattering spectroscopy, these samples are clearly different and can be studied with unprecedented detail. Thank you for watching this video about low energy ion scattering spectroscopy. Be sure to check out the description for additional information and also subscribe on the channel for more educative videos in the future.